You are listening to WPHM Digital Broadcasting. The best in paranormal talk radio. Reaching all the way back to 1948, Fate Magazine has brought you reports of the strange and unknown, all of them true. Fate Radio is carrying on that tradition. Here is your host of Fate Radio, Kat Hobson. Good evening and welcome to Fate Radio. I am your host, Kat Hobson, and I am so pleased to have you all here. I am looking forward to tonight's program because this is certainly something that is not my expertise. I'm I'm so impressed by people who can do what tonight's guest does. I have great aspirations. I will look into my yard and think, oh, if I could just have this here or have this there. And my reality is that it doesn't happen because I have... I'm terrible at plant nurturing. I do hear them. I do know that they are like living things. And I've even killed mother-in-law tongue. And if you live in the South, you know what that is. And you know that that is a near impossibility. My guest, I know, (laughs) Judy is laughing in the background. (laughs) But, you know, I can do roses just by looking at them and sticking them in the ground. Our guest tonight, Dr. Judy Griffin, who is Aroma Health Texas for her website, www.aromahealthtexas.com, is someone who knew at an early age that she could interact. She comes from a family of organic healers. Um, I mean, I'm just fascinated by this whole topic, and I'm so looking forward to learning more. And Judy... Thank you so much, Dr. Judy Griffin. Thank you so much for being with me tonight. Thank you. And, you know, I know that you giggled a little bit when I said that because you are also in the southern U.S. Oh, yeah. I I don't really know how I managed to, to do that, but my mother would give me potted plants to keep in my apartment and she would come and change them out and take them home to rehabilitate them <laughs> and then bring me more and it was kind of a, um it was kind of a sad experience for the plants but it's very bizarre because I can actually do roses which are supposed to be so difficult that's that's the interesting thing about plants people have done a lot of talking to gardeners and different you know, speaking engagements like that. And somebody will always say, well, this kind of plant grows in my yard, but I can't get this one. You know, I think it's, you know, to me, it's the fairies. It's whatever plants are growing well in your yard. They are being nurtured by their environment. It's, um, and that includes the, the fairies. So that happens. I know people who can kill mint and I don't, I, I can't get rid of it. I mean, (laughs) (laughs) I understand that. And, you know, I am just always amazed by the fact that people just, we can find everything that we need in the plant world. And you mentioned mint. My, my aunt's mom well, parents had a house and a great big front porch. And any time that you wanted mint tea, all you had to do was just reach over the side of the porch. Because Not, it was always there. So I understand yeah. about the mint. Yeah. But. Well, yeah. One time when I was teaching at University of Texas, and I would come in with just great big, huge bags full of apple mint you know, that I had pulled out of my yard because it's taking over, you know, it's, so 
these eager herbalists were all ready to go home and plant some almond. <laughs> I had to dodge some of those people later when they found out that it was going to also take care, uh, take um, hold of their yard and kind of take over. So, yeah. Well, I know that you actually communicate with the plants. They communicate with you. And I also, I've got to tell you, I have really enjoyed reading your work. I have been all over Aroma Health, Texas, learning. I have been going through your books. I actually am in the middle of one of them because I thought maybe there's hope. (laughs) (laughs) There has to be some way to do this. And I'm hoping that it's going to be true. What what happened, I, I can't take a lot of credit for this. What happened is um, I had twins, and it's been like, therefore, they just turned 45. So a long time ago, had these twins. They were big, n- normal-looking twins, but found out they had immune deficiencies. And um, the specialist kept saying, they're not going to live, they're not going to live. The immune deficiencies turned into 105 fevers, anaphylactic shock. I mean, I was in the ER all the time with one or both of them. And so it was kind of like, I guess it was kind of like desperation, which is not the best place to be in when you're going within. But it's like, look. You know, I, I got to do something. So I happened to, to bump into the um, pediatrician, and he was just the normal one, not a specialist. And he said, look, just go home and do what you know how to do. Quit stressing. You're making it worse. So I thought, I can cook and I can grow, right? So... Um, Now, I didn't say I could grow well. I just said I could grow. So that's what I started doing. And, you know, the the plants started speaking to me. Or I felt all this information coming to me, okay? I don't think it was all in me already. But, you know, I guess everybody looks at it differently. Um, But at that time, it was definitely what I call a sole purpose coming through that I was supposed to work with plants and you know from that time on I got all kinds of information some you know I could document and say yes this has been done before some some not so there we go and from there I ended up working in hospitals helping other people with topical application of, of plants you know as much as I could do in hospitals And I wrote uh, Mother Nature's Herbal, which is, oh, Mm. it's it's a 400-page book. That is a great resource. It's been out for 20 years. Llewellyn published it 20 years ago. And it's still out there. And it's all these remedies that different um, cultures use with foods and plants and how they use it and take care of their hair and their skin and all kinds of different reasons. And, you know, as much as I could find out and prove, 5,000 or more years later, it all works, you know, without scientific research to figure out if this herb is really good for what the ancients told us our lives are proving with or without the research that these, that's exactly what these plants are good for. Just like you're good for radio shows, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and I, Thank you. <laughs> so plants have a purpose too, and I assume just like everything else. And it's interesting to me, Kat, because they each have a different song. It's, it's, it's a song. I don't know what else. It's music I hear around them. Maybe that's their soul. I don't know. Um, and as you might guess, roses have the most evolved or advanced type of music. What type of music is it? Does 
is it a is it something that is in other auditory experiences like classical or or wind or what do you what do you hear it's more of a melody it's it's almost a it's not really a background mel- melody but it's the kind of thing you can hum with and obviously it's it's not ZZ Top or you know rap music or anything you know or or even classical that you know has crescendos and things like that it's mellow and it just it just flows and it's just all around um, I hear that in the wind do you? yes That's, yeah so I understand what you're saying. Yeah. One time I I um, had a Kundalini um, initiation with with a real master, not on somebody in TV or something from India, and I had the same kind of experience. I was traveling through the universes and I saw lights and colors and heard music I had never heard before, except around the flowers. So that's. I guess what my soul is tuned into, I I really, I just, supposing, I don't know anything for sure, makes sense to me. Can you tell me what a kundalini is? Kundalini is when um, all the chakras, all the energy coming up from the, the spine, from the earth, comes up and it opens up inevitably the crown chakra and you you have some kind of experience some people's it's it's frightening um but it does make you um say meet maybe meet your fears or um it's not usually just wonderful and it's not the kind of thing you can exactly do on a massage table either um, it was, I mean, we went through fasting and different, different, um, mantras and different things. And it was the people, um, who were, it was a, a spiritual couple from a temple and, and they would, they went through and one of them would touch your forehead and off you go. And in their experience, what they were saying, um, it was translated, was that they were at that moment at least taking on your karma so that could happen. And it's it's just like if an atomic bomb blew up. You know, it's just huge amounts of energy. And when you release that kundalini energy, that's the kind of thing that happens. It's, and I, I assume it's different for different people, but I was well, surprised. Yeah. Well, that's, I didn't know someone could take on your karma. Well, it's only, I think, for that moment or that, you know, however long it took. Uh, you know, you, you traveled, I traveled and traveled and traveled through um, light and then sound and then darkness and then nothing. I just became one of darkness, nothing. Sounds Buddhist, but... Well, it sounds amazing. I have, I know one other person who can, who can travel like that, but she does it solo. Uh Uh-huh. And I find that fascinating. I mean, she has things that, that help her with that. I've been able to, you know, like spontaneously go somewhere in my mind and and I'm there and I'm experiencing it. But this is so much, this was very different. And I've, I've never had that experience again. So I have this wild. Yeah. Tried. Um, Enough is enough, I suppose, but it, it, (laughs) well, maybe you got what you needed that first time. That's, that's what I, Think and and everything from that moment on, and of course these people were 